All right. It's that time. It's time for Beyond Sight and Sound. Let's do this. like to optimize your success out in the field metal detecting and gold prospecting one word coil tech they've been manufacturing high performance aftermarket coils for years now for popular models such as the e-track the sovereign the explorer series the gpx series and our favorite the 10x5 for the CTX 3030. Great target separation in trashy areas, still maintaining excellent depth for the coil size. Coil Tech is optimizing discovery, your potential for success in the field. You can check them out at coiltechmanufacturing.com.au. All right, we're back and we're live once again. You are listening to Beyond Sight and Sound, metal detecting and treasure hunting radio for all the really cool digging people out there. And when I look into the chat, I see Home Finders in, Ohio Relic Hunter, let's see, Miss Barb's in the house, uh, Jesse's in, and I believe there were a few other names that rolled through there. I'm not real sure. I may have, they may have just kind of rolled right past me as I'm taking care of other things here. Obviously, you know how it goes. Uh, what, tonight's Wednesday, the 19th. We're here on Sundays. We're here on Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, always 8 p.m. Eastern. You can follow us here on Spreaker, iTunes, the Beyond Sight and Sound page on Facebook, the Beyond Sight and Sound group, and all of that other happy jazz. Uh, other than that, I'm sure you've all seen the promos. You've seen the link drop uh, this week. Tonight's show, when that link dropped, it also dropped with a link to Connecticut Todd's website below the link for the player. So, if you've got questions about the the settings that are being talked about tonight, something like that, maybe you missed it, make sure you've got your notepad, you've got the link for Connecticut Todd's website, you can always flop over to that and check those out settings for the dais and the ctx or even just drop in and check out some of those really cool finds he's been making <laughs> you'll really get a kick out of that i'm sure nice finds to be seen definitely but uh i think we're just gonna roll right into things here and we're gonna get todd in here too and see how things are going so let's get going with it how's it going todd uh good evening Good evening. Yes, so, it's, it's so been a while. I'm really, I'm really glad to be back. Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's been, uh, what, a, a year ago, I believe. Roughly. Was it? Or maybe, or maybe it was two years. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I, I remember doing the show. I, I tune in my, and listen uh, here and there when I'm not asleep in my chair by 8 o'clock, which does happen on a pretty regular basis. Um. I know how that can go. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, I'm 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 really glad to be here. I would uh, be pleased to talk about anything that uh, any of your listeners would like to talk about tonight. Um, I can go through XP DAS very well. I can go through CTX very well. I'm at least consider myself to be pretty qualified on the two of those machines. And then uh, whatever else we want to talk about. I think the last time I was here, I talked about uh, permission. Obtaining, yes. Obtaining permission. Yes, which permissions. It's also on my site. Let me talk. Let me just say about my my website first off. Sure. Yeah, there's, that, there's some... that would be good. Give people a rundown uh, everything that's there because there is quite a bit of resource there. I, I've done I do, I've done the website on purpose the way it looks uh, you know with some finds and stuff and and it's on my on my uh, detecting business card so I hand it to a landowner so that they can go see what I do that was really part of starting the site but in the last little bit last few years uh, with the help of Tim Kerber uh, I've expanded the site and have tried to make it a resource for diggers now uh the section there's sections there on how to my exact blurb for asking permission and a couple do's and don'ts that i believe in for asking permission there's a tab there for uh detector settings uh, as we're going to talk about tonight and there's a tab there for how to clean coins. And that tab is pretty interesting as it's not just my uh, cleaning and uh, versions, but I've got guests, friend, uh, digger friends of mine, like Dave Wise has got a section on, on there on how he likes to clean coins. And uh, there's a peroxide uh, method on there from uh, Don and Jersey is on there. And soon, coming very soon is going to be an electrolysis section from doc watson is also nice. going to be on. so it's really supposed to be a resource for diggers there's also a, you know there's a links tab and some sites that i like are, are there but uh you can uh, contact me through there people can can talk to me or facebook i'm i'm glad to talk about metal detecting uh at any point with anybody i like to see everybody's finds and uh, see what everybody's digging. And, you know, if you want, just friend me on Facebook. I'm glad to uh, to agree for anybody that's digging. Uh, and uh, just, you know, I'll ask you questions, too. Definitely, if uh, if I see something that I want to know about, I'll, I, I will get a hold of you. So it goes in both directions. Right. I'm that's old. how we all learn. That's right. That's right. So... Anyway, that's what cttodd.com uh, is all about. Um, it's always there. To be honest with you, it's very inexpensive to keep it there. And I update it with, the, you know, the new cleaning methods. And I just did a bunch of pictures this week. And I actually updated the, uh, the Deus program for V4 uh, just a couple weeks ago on there. So there's, there's a lot there. So basically, if people go to visit your site, they should probably save it to their favorites or something and check back regularly. <laughs> well, there's absolutely no advertising there. So, you know, it's completely up to you. I mean, I do update, uh, like, uh, my program for the dais has changed over the last six months, probably three or four times as I've found things that worked a little better and a little better. I will update uh, the site as soon as I'm sure that I've made a good move, you know, sometimes you adjust something and then you really don't like it. But uh, my current everyday hunt is on there under the v, uh, Deus Pro, CT Todd program V4. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can talk about that later, but if somebody wants to ask questions or call in, uh, we could do that, or I can just start going down the... Uh, settings on a on a dais just as general information you tell me or whatever people want to talk about we could talk about ctx as far as i'm concerned because i love that detector as much as i do the dais they work together complement each other very well very nice and i'm sure that uh, i see in the chat here home finder is dropping the call-in number for those who 
uh, may want to call in. We'll try to get those calls as they come along, and uh, hopefully we don't have any problem with that. But for starters, I think, uh, how how long have you been using a dais now? What prompted you to try one? I got one fairly early. Um, the first year that I went to England uh, is what really prompted me uh, to get a dais. I wanted a, at the time, I only had a CTX, and I really wanted to bring uh, two detectors with me to England uh, to make sure that I had a backup. Uh, you know, you get all the way over there with all the expense and so forth, uh, you don't want to break down. No. And, and, you know, I did a, I did a lot of research on what they were using in England and was really listening to it. And the dais just kept popping up and popping up for the guys over there. And then I've known Andy for years with his, uh, detecting books and so forth. And he has spotlighted me in some of his books. So we've been chatting for years. And finally I talked to him about it. And he said, you know, oh, yeah, he says, the, you know, uh, Deus is killing it in England. He try one. And that's where it went. I mean, I ordered one. I got about three months under my belt with it before I went to England. And uh, every everything has been uh, since then. So probably four years, I would say. Yeah, four, four, four years on the Deus, I would say. But it's and, probably certainly easier to travel with than the CTX is. Oh, yeah. The Deus goes in a backpack and comes carry-on. <laughs> not And has never been a problem going through an airport in either direction either. So uh, super, super easy to travel with, obviously. And anybody that has one knows, you know, how, how easy that is. Uh, at least now, if you're traveling with a CTX, you can buy one of those travel rods uh, for it because... Getting a CTX into a suitcase with that big uh, lower section is just a forget it. Yeah, you know, it, I, it takes some some manipulating. Yeah, I uh, I have a I actually have a, a, a suitcase that I that I bring with me to England every trip that a CTX lower lower section will fit in, uh, but it's you know it's something that I used to hunt with and uh, I used to prior to. Not prior to metal detecting, but towards the start of my metal detecting 20 years ago, I was a, a crazed whitetail hunter with a bow and arrow. I mean, it just, wow. you know, all over the place. And one of these guys that, you know, has four sets of clothes and hangs them special and 15 deer stands and hunt it all over. Just, it's pretty much how I do. Every, I just go off the deep end uh, for anything well. I do. All or none, no no sense in doing yeah. it half-assed. No prisoners, no prisoners whatsoever. So now I've phased out the uh, the hunting. I don't actually uh, chase anything anymore. Uh, unless the guys all want to go, then I'll go. But uh, I'm full-on uh, metal detecting at this point, just straight-on digger. And it's different kind of hunting, that's all. You still got to do research. You still got to put yourself in the right place and... Uh, know how to get the job done when the target's there. So right. it's, it's haunting. Uh, just a little different. And, uh, well, look, there's Brandon. Hey, Brandon. How yes, you doing? Yes, I, I did see that. Swansea is in the chat tonight. Uh, apparently he saw the link somewhere and thought, oh, well, if it's Todd, i got to drop in. <laughs> but that's, that's definitely good to see him there. Definitely. Uh, with with you having experience, uh, quite a bit of experience, actually, with both the CTX and the Deus, then you know that there are a number of different settings on either machine. Sure. What would you recommend to people, say somebody's just coming into the hobby and they're thinking about a CTX or a Deus, what is the best way to explain to them? Because a lot of people get intimidated by the number of settings that there are. What would you tell somebody, you know, to not have it scare them away? <laughs> okay. Um, 
Well, first, first I, I, I mean, if, if it were an older person coming into the hobby, uh, maybe someone who's retired and always wanted to or something like that, then I pretty much would, would say that the dais is a home run there. Um, you know, physically, what's necessary uh, to, to, to swing for full days or partial days even, the CTX uh, definitely uh, is going to take more energy and so forth to to do it uh the ctx is much more critical towards swing speed uh than a dais is um you know the, the in my opinion once you get each of those machines set okay. uh, they are both a turn on and go detector both of them are oh absolutely uh, i would agree with that uh, I think the CTX may be a little more so than the Deus is, but not after you build your program and get a little knowledge under your belt with the Deus. Uh, and we can, we can talk about, you know, saving a program because one of the, one of the top things with a Deus is you really, if you want to do well with it, you need to get out of the, the set programs that are in there. Right. You can make a tremendous difference in, how well this machine functions and uh, how well you do with it, uh, especially if you are in an area with a lot of targets uh, by setting uh, it properly. And uh, there's just, you know, there's some things there that, that, that need, need to be addressed. Um, the CTX is, you, you know, you can put, you can put the CTX and coin pro factory coin program and venture right off into that park, uh, in town and do very well with it and not be missing modern coins. You know, there are settings there, uh, you know, there's settings there to get deeper things and things you should adjust on a CTX as well. But, you know, just in general, turn on noise cancel and off you go. Uh, on a CTX in coin program, you're going to do well. Um, it's about, uh, it's a, it, if you took a dais and you, and you stuck it in uh basic one or something like that and went out, I'm not saying that you won't find things. You certainly, you certainly will. What I'm saying is that you can do better. You can find deeper things. You can find things adjacent to other targets, uh, much much more, uh, uh, much easier. Like you, you unlock the real potential of the machine. Yes, yes. I mean that 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 is a fair way to say it. And and depending on how you're gonna where, excuse me, where you're going to hunt, can be very. Uh, in my opinion, a CTX is a better machine in modern trash. Modern okay. trash. Without depth. So you're talking basically like your 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 uh, park area that's had a, a number of years of say can slaw and pull tabs and bottle caps. I think identification of those items is easier with a CTX uh than it is with a dais until you know what you're doing with a dais. I think okay. that a that a casual user, a casual user, uh, will do better with a CTX in a modern trash environment than a, with a dais. Okay. Now, again, this is just my opinion. I own both machines. Right, and it sounds like you're kind of saying that's not to say you can't do it with the dais. You just have no, to you, no, understand you certainly, what it's telling you. Exactly. That is what I'm saying. Uh, you absolutely can do it with a dais, and there's some guys out there that are killing it with a dais in parks, okay, and, and modern parks, modern trash, can law, bottle caps, all of it. But it takes a little bit more to get used to what you're being told by your machine uh, with the dais, in my opinion, uh, over a CTX. That is the one difference. Especially now, if you were primarily a MindLab user before you went to it. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, Tones, I have, numbers, it's all different. I literally have 
thousands of hours on mine lab machines. I started with a Sovereign. It was bought from Gary Storm, and if that name rings a bell for you, Gary Storm is the guy that makes Detector Pro headphones. That's right. And his own metal detector store where they uh, built the headphones and so forth and distributed from was in the town I grew up in. So Gary Storm was my uh, my dealer. Uh, just by act, I didn't know that he did headphones. He just, you know, here's your detector, here's some phones, and showed me how to use it. And uh, he actually had a great influence on my on my detecting career, I guess you call it. Uh, the first day with a sovereign, he reached across in front of me when he was showing me how to run it, and he went over to the discrimination knob, and he turned that right down to zero, and he looked at me, and he said, this is called discrimination, and it's not your friend. <laughs> that's very true yeah and and he said use as little of this as you possibly can and i took it to heart and uh i actually never used discrimination with a mine lab product all the way through even today with my ctx uh i hunt it wide open all the time i realize that you don't have to do it that way but uh that stuck and i just got used to it it doesn't bother me to listen to it But that being said, no discrimination and listen to all of it on a CTX, that is one of the key beauties of an XP Deus. An XP Deus has standard discrimination, just like any other detector has. But it also has a feature that very few detectors have out there called iron volume. Uh Iron volume allows you to have discrimination set so that you don't have to listen to every single item at full volume come through the headphones, every nail, every piece of iron, but lets you adjust the level that you hear everything within the discriminated zone. So it's the best of both worlds, in my opinion. I still want to hear iron as I come into uh, I have a place where something happened because if there's iron there, something happened there. You don't want to not hear the iron. Absolutely. We, iron leads the way to occupation and activity. Exactly. But you don't have to listen to every nail and every, you know, rusted plow tip or whatever it is banging you in the ears. You just turn it down. I run my iron volume uh, at two. I just want to know that there's stuff going on under the coil, but I don't have to listen to it at a full volume level. And that is absolutely key. And especially for my type of hunting. Now, I'm a little different. Even when I'm hunting a CTX, if it's not grunting, I have my iron set at the lowest tone. If it's not grunting at me, I'm not happy. I'm not in a place where anything ever happened. I want to hear, almost like a threshold, I want to hear that iron grunting at me. That's what time. I was just going to say. It's it's basically working like we use our, uh, for many of us, like we use our threshold. You're keeping it down there low, but you still want to hear it. You want to hear it break. A- absolutely. That is absolutely key. And here's a couple of things I'm sure hardly nobody, at least on here, all my buddies know this, but I've never hunted a park. Not once. I was at a boot camp four or five times where we ended up in a park for the demo part, but I have never hunted a park, a public park. Never. I've only, I've only hunted a beach twice and that was last summer and I hated it. (laughs) (laughs) Going, this isn't like the home sites and farm fields. I'm going back. Oh, and there's water and sand, and sand gets into everything, and I just hated it. And it was full of bottle caps and garbage. I, I, I tell you, I, I just hated it. I hunt, and the and my settings reflect this. I hunt in the woods, uh, near cellar holes and that type of thing, and I hunt farm fields. That's where I hunt. Uh, all those finds you, you see on my beat, that's where they came from. They didn't come from a ball field. They didn't come from a park. All that stuff on my site, plus the ridiculous piles that my wife will 
complain about uh, all come from the from the woods and the fields, and that's just the way it is. That's that's where I love to hunt. But if 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 you want to hunt deep with a dais, I do have some settings that will work for you. Yes, that that definitely. Uh, as you get into that, with you using both machines, and and they do complement each other well. Do you think one is necessarily any deeper than the other, or are they fairly comparable in depth? As long as you adjust it right. Okay. Uh, they're in a farm field, Brandon. That's the first. I'm answering a question on the chat. Uh, I dug nine coppers that day, and Gary, GK man, dug, dug seven. And we think it was a cache that got hit by the plow and spread out because they were all kind of in a line. Okay, nice. back to your back to your question, Josh. If you have an 11 inch coil on an XP dais and you have a the stock coil on a CTX, I don't believe there is any depth difference between those two machines. Nice. I know for I know for a fact that if you have a 17 inch coil on a CTX and you are using an 11 inch coil on the dais, the CTX will go deeper than the dais. Well, uh, but look how much bigger the coil is. Yeah, yeah. because Gary, my hunt partner, uh, primarily hunts with a 17-inch coil on the CTX. He's young and full. Can of, handle swinging uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, all day. yeah. Uh, I, 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 it would. I have. I used to shoot competitive archery, and my shoulder just will not put up with that 17-inch uh, coil. And if I have to wear harnesses and I just couldn't. Uh, I I just won't won't do it. But uh, Gary has swung over things, uh, had me walk over, and uh, in one case I can clearly remember a copper that he could hear and I could not with an eleven inch coil on the dais with my settings, and he was using CTX, and that copper was about. A, I don't couldn't answer to whether it was perfectly flat or not, but. Uh, uh, it was a solid uh, 10 to 11 inches down. Now, I have dug deeper than that with a dais, and I have dug coppers deeper than that. But, of course, you know, keep in mind that that depends on the field you're in, the day you're on it. Right, the, moisture, the moisture, conditions that moisture, day. It, 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 all of that affects all of those things. And uh, he had a... Uh, a coil that looks, at least in size, even though measurements, uh, is is gigantic compared to an 11 inch coil. Um, I was whacking. Uh, uh, I was whacking um, mini balls. I guess that's what they call them in Virginia. I've been down to Virginia digging twice. I was whacking uh, mini balls at 12 and 14 inches with the dais with the 11 inch coil. That's um, pretty respectable. We're not, not obviously not in the red dirt. You know, this is not, we weren't in the red dirt. We're, uh, uh, we're in what I would call a, uh, pine forest type of loomy soil. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, they were laughing at me though, too, because by the end of the day, I had, I had dug, uh, two large cents and a half real too. And they said, you know, we bring you all the way down here and, and you're just digging the same stuff you dig up there. So. <laughs> well, I, I think as long as we got them through, we've got a caller. Go ahead, caller. Evening, Josh. How are you doing? Jesse. How goes it? Yes, sir. Oh, not too bad. Hotter than Hades, but we're, we're making it. <laughs> Yeah, we're supposed to have a heat index of 103 the next four days, I believe. Yeah, I'll keep sending it your way. Maybe I'll get rid of it. <laughs> oh, that's not right. <laughs> well, you got to go somewhere. Right. Well, <laughs> true, true. You got a question for Todd? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, Todd. Two hey, how are three. you? What's that? I said, how are you? Oh, not too bad yourself. I'm I'm hot, but I'm all right. All right. On the CTX thirty thirty, my question yeah. is: Should you ever run the deep and 
task settings on at the same time? Or are you going to start getting really off numbers? Well, I don't know if I can speak to the to the numbers uh, changing, but I can speak to the tones of the targets changing when fast is engaged. I run I run deep, but not fast uh, on the CTX. Uh, I don't I feel that it clips uh, the audio on the deep targets when you run it in fast. Um, it, you know, it's supposed to help you. It's essentially supposed to help you with separation of targets. Um, right. I, I'm like, I, I primarily do field hunting as well. And yep. you'll get in where, you know, an old building hits sad or maybe a trash pile got burnt. And all of a sudden you, you run into that trash area, you know, and I, I can never seem to pick the good stuff out in those areas if there is any good stuff, you know. So with the stock coil? Yeah. Yeah, I you know I I I've had all three coils for CTX, uh, but I very rarely hunt it with anything but the the 11 inch, inch coil. Uh, my opinion on it is that you really have to go surprisingly slower than you think you do. Right. With that detector, I I go to hunt. You know, I like to go to the Bone Show up in New Hampshire, and I'm I'm going to the Great Catskill Hunt with the Nor'easters Metal Detecting Club next month. Uh, and I, I see a lot of great hunters and I see a lot of guys just whipping a CTX back and forth and you, you simply can't do it. Uh, the machine will not go deep for you if you're wagging that back and forth. Now there's always the, you know, there's always the exception where you're going to find that great find and, and more power to you, but paying attention to sweep speed on the CTX is critical for deep targets and separation. And I know you asked, you know, deep on and fast on. As I say, uh, most of the guys I know are hunting deep because that's talking about amplifying deep targets response right. so that you get in so that you get a beep, uh, but are not hunting the fast option. Uh, they're going to pay more attention to the sweep speed and do it that way for the separation. Exactly. Yeah, I'd, usually, I'd, I'd I like usually to hunt do. deep and go very slow. And that's if that's you, normally what I have done. I'm just wondering when I hit those trash areas, you know, maybe I'll turn deep off and turn fast on or something to try and change it up a little bit. I mean, and I'm not swinging fast because i got to go in between corn stalks and everything else. I got but you. I, I'm going slow. <laughs> well, right. you know, I... When I when I hunt my CTX in a corn lot or alfalfa cut alfalfa field or something like that, uh, there's a few things that I'll do. I usually will hunt it in manual as opposed to auto, it, as mm -hmm. long as there isn't as long as there isn't a, a mineralization problem or or something. Oh no, it's benign <laughs> benign soil. There's nothing I'll, here. I'll anyway. hunt it in manual and I'll and I'll crank it up till it's basically just about not stable, but but. Just about is exactly what I mean when I say just about, because if your machine is is crackling and talking and 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 sounding when you do touch a stalk by accident or anything else, then you're not hearing what you should be hearing, and you're going to miss something. Okay, so I usually on my ground, and this would be different at yours, mm -hmm. I'm able to get it up around twenty six, twenty seven on my ground. Not very mineralized, and it'll stay stable at that number. And I'll swing that for a, for a farm field. To be honest, at this point in the last few years, though, I prefer the hunt to dais in a in a in an open field like that. The dais is extremely uh, less critical on sweep speed uh, comparatively to to the CTX. Uh, you almost can't swing a dais too fast. Uh, the reactivity, which is the setting that governs how fast, let's call it uh, a way of saying this, is uh, of what reactivity does is your machine is constantly taking a look at what's under the coil. It waits X amount of time for a response to come from the signal that was sent down into the ground and come back up before it resets and, and shoots again. Okay, and waits for a response. Yeah, in layman's terms. Right, right. 
the even of a setting reactivity of one, a Deus is light years faster than a CTX is in getting it done, analyzing it. You have to remember, you know, every four or five years they tell you that your computer at home is a piece of junk. And they're right. Uh, if you watch electronics and so forth, uh, your the speed of the processors and the things uh, internally on your home computer, your laptop, even your iPhone or whatever it is, is night and day from what it was five years ago. And how old is a CTX? How old is a CTX when that technology was put in the box? Right. So the technology in the CTX has not changed. As you may or may not know, the only, there's been two updates, one for pinpoint lock and one for adding Hungarian or something to it. Uh, so there's been nothing done to that machine in all these years. So you're hunting with a machine that has, if you're going to talk computers and that's what this is, processors and so forth, you got six year old stuff in there. You have an XP Deus. These guys were on version 4.1 coming out next month, I believe. And it's a, no, no, don't get me wrong. There's no major fixes in 4.1. It's just some, some bug fixes, um, the, about the probe. So there's not more crazy, wonderful things coming yet. But these guys at least have stayed on top of it and have upgraded your, your technology. That's why it's so much faster. Now, maybe someday in the future when there's a 30, 40 or something else, then we'll have a faster mind lab. But here's my speech that I give to the guys swinging mind labs on, on sweep speed. If you're swinging your mind lab and you encounter a target and you have to break your stride to go get a second look at it with your coil, to put your coil back over it, you're moving too fast. Okay? You follow me? If you're swinging along as you're back and forth, back and forth, and you have to break stride to get a second look at a target, you are going too fast for a CTX. That's just a rule of thumb thing. Uh, in my opinion, I, I think Andy agrees with me. But uh, Well, and it is sound logic. I appreciate okay. the tips, and I'll get off here so somebody else can call in. And you two gentlemen have a real good night. You too. Happy hunting. As do you. All you right. guys, uh, anybody who's out there listening, uh, friend me on Facebook. I want to see what you find. Hit me up. You'll find there me. There you go. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, that gives them a chance to see some of the stuff you've been finding as well. The... I hit it good. I hit it good over the weekend this weekend. I had a heck of a weekend. Um, right. I actually went back with the dais and hunted the first yard I ever hunted. So 20 years ago, I hunted this yard with a uh, sovereign, mine lab sovereign. Right. X XS. I think that's what Sovereign XS. I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, it is kind of sick. I'll tell you this story briefly. But uh, the second target I ever dug was a 1774 Spanish two real, and it came out of this. What a way it to came get out, started! Uh, what a way to get hooked uh, forever! <laughs> right. Uh, I dug a Memorial Cent penny, which incidentally. In the parking lot, when I got out of the out of the truck at this guy's house, I dug a uh, a, a memorial penny in the driveway. It was the first target I ever dug, and I'll be perfect. I was so happy with that penny. I just said, "This damn, look at this! I found this penny right here." I walked out. In the, I I walked out in the yard, took about four swings, wah wah, dug down about two inches, and out pops this thing. And I'm looking at it, and I had absolutely no idea what it was. But I was thoroughly, thoroughly convinced I'm rich. Right, yeah, I've hit the mother load. So I put it in my pocket, and I tried to detect another couple seconds. And I said, no, got to go home show the wife this, because we are rich. We just did it. 
Well, you know what they're they're really worth. Uh, I brought it home. I brought it home, showed it to her. She was also convinced we were rich, um, and uh, then went online and figured out that they're worth about twenty two dollars. But anyway, uh, that still was still a first cool day. find, though. Still a cool find, and and has cost me thousands upon thousands. Of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> well, good point. Yeah, so so I uh, uh, I went back to that yard on Sunday this past weekend, and damned if I didn't hit another real. So apparently, twenty years ago, maybe I wasn't the best detectorist because yeah. the because the dais went right in there and nailed a half real seventeen forty eight in amazing shape, uh, right where I know I went with that original machine a bunch of times, and I think. I'm pretty sure I was there once with the CT or E track, but uh, oh well, I guess I missed stuff. Oh, it happens to <laughs> all of us, though. All right, so uh, why don't we uh, talk about some? Key, why don't we do this? Why don't we talk about some key things for each of the machines? I see you have a caller. Let's do that first, and then we'll we'll talk about some key things before we run out of time. I don't know how where okay. you run to. Here. Go ahead, caller. Hey, I got a few questions. Well, I got—I guess I have one question, and I have a comment that I would like to share. Um, this is Mike. Hey, guys. How's it going, Mike? Mike. Good. Um, hey, I, one of the things that, that I think has always been my opinion that I want to say, um, and keep in mind I'm not, I'm not brand loyal, but I have always said – and I have people that, that agree that nothing IDs targets, at least that we've ever used, is good as a mine lab. Um, Agreed. And there's been several, several many times that, that it's just blown me away of what, what it's capable of. And I, you know, I've always thought, you know, the CTX writes, I think it's been out, what, six years? But you look at technology even before that and before the e-track on other brands and, you know, take the T2, for example, or, you know, at Fishers, they're known. Um, those things are lightning fast. The G2, oh, my God, Technetics G2. And I, I've always suspected that the e-track, CTX, the, the FPS technology is analyzing so much as why it's running slower. And that's why you have to swing slower. I mean, I don't know. It's an idea. It's a thought. I, I know they're slower, and, and you got to swing slow. I I got used to that very early on, and I really enjoyed that. I, I you know, coming from some machines that they would, you know, especially because I'm a field hunter like you, and when you get in that iron debris, that can be really hard when you got a, a machine that you have to swing faster with. You know, I, I remember one machine I had, it said you have to swing faster. If you swing slow, it, it'll actually fall. Well, when you get in that iron, that's tough. Um, and then another thing, I, my question I have, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still fighting off a cold. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot, I talked to a lot of people, metal detecting, and you, you hear, I hear all these great things about the dais, and then I hear hear bad things. And don't get me wrong, there's some things I hear about the CTX too, uh, as well. But I suspect, uh, for, and I've never used a, a dais. I can't even say it right. As hard as I try, I always get it wrong. <laughs> and and don't get me wrong, I know some guys who love it, who love it and do really good. But you know. Even guys that love it that tell me some of the things about it, I suspect that the e track CTX is an all around better machine. Would you would you agree or am I am I wrong or I'll speak uh first to your TIDs. Uh and I can only and I, I can only answer uh on mine lab machines and the XP because I've never swung okay. any anything else. 
Uh, in my mind, there's no question uh, that you are correct that the mine lab uh, target identification is better uh, than any other. Well, it's, it's better than XP Deus. As I said, I can't speak to any other machines. I have zero okay. exper experience with them, so I'm not going to comment that way. Uh, but uh, the, the, that being said, uh, the CTX also has some issues with TID because it piles all the good targets uh, on the 1230 and above line almost virtually uh, from about 1238 to 1245 go ahead and dig it but you don't know what you got and any person that tells me that they know they have silver or they know is full of baloney if you're swinging an e-track uh, you could tell whether you had silver or not but that's simply not uh, not something you're going to do with a CTX and I defy anybody uh, to tell me different I've got thousands of hours swinging uh, both of those machines. And uh, they, uh, C uh, CTX and Mine Labs will ID a target better than a Deus. Yes. Now, the, the CTX, you're, you're right. The CTX lost a little something. Yeah, um, it lost the silver sound. There. Uh, Me and the, Josh have talked about that. We've talked about that with it. You know, all right. you kind well, of. Go ahead. If, uh, let me put it this way, if the ergonomics of, of an E-Track were better and, uh, well, basically, if the ergonomics of an E-Track were better and it could see two targets at once, which the CTX can do and the E-Track uh, really, for the most part, can't, I'd be swinging an E-Track still and not a CTX because I enjoy being able to say that's a silver dime, that's a silver quarter. And Very you could well be picky, and you could be picky like that in a yard where you have a yard permission and you don't want to leave brown circles all over the yard, but you want to dig good targets. CTX doesn't give you that option. You got a twelve forty three, and it's a potluck dinner as to what's down there when you dig it, mm -hmm. and that's just the way it is. Now, the the XP Deus, your next part that you said about iron and so forth like that. The XP Deus will, will kick a CTX's ass all day long in the iron. No ifs, ands, buts about it. And anybody that says otherwise has absolutely no idea what they're talking about, uh, about an XP Deus. I think that's concise enough. Uh, I would uh, say so, yeah. The XP Deus is a fantastic field and woods machine. Uh, when used properly for a U.S. environment. You know, now, that's I, a good point, Todd. The Deus will probably walk circles around the uh, CTX in iron all day long, as long as it's properly set up. I have taught the, these boot camps with, with Andy, and I have my own years of experience at this point, both in the U.S. and the U.K. on an XP Deus, and I can tell you Flat out, they're an awesome machine. Oh and yeah, I can, tell, I can tell you flat out that showing up at the at the days camps and not everybody coming to an to a boot camp is a newbie by any stretch of the imagination, and they do not have their machines set up properly and won't take the time to either even buy Andy's book which is a $20 bill and the best money you could spend on an XP Deus, in my opinion. Not pushing Andy's book, but it is the Bible on the CTX, E-Track, and XP Deus. But you actually have to read it. You can't just the, set it on a shelf. The books are good. Are, the pictures are great. And a bunch of them in the back of the CTX are my pictures, which makes them even better. <laughs> but you actually have to do it. Right. Uh, you have to sit down and test. Now, the XP Deus, as I stated a little earlier, I don't know if you're listening, it's not in modern trash. I'd rather be swinging right. my CTX. But I heard that, yeah. being, that being said, if there are a lot of guys out there who, who all they do is hunt parks and so forth, and they do very well with an XP Deus in these parks and in, in these setups. And 
you know, they're paying attention to the deeper targets on purpose, and they're doing other tricks where they're avoiding the garbage and the and the crap. And here's one of the here's one of the problems in detecting, and without preaching too much, you got a lot of guys out there who who have had eight machines in two years. <laughs> they That's have learned not enough time to learn a machine. They have learned no. none of none of them well. And Absolutely. I, and I, if 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 you, if if you don't a couple things if you, if you don't have a test garden set up somewhere, and and the ability to play, if you don't know what an what a what a large scent sounds like at eight inches, why don't you? In your ground, in your in your areas, okay, you can't complain about a machine until you give it a fair try. And three months, and this and this thing's crap, and put it back on eBay, and then be all over the forums about this is junk and that's great and this it. Jesus, it just sometimes I I actually take breaks from the forum. I can't take it after a while. <laughs> they, I, uh, I I agree. I you get. There is so much bad information. On, I, I just be. What is the old? If it's on the internet, it must be true. Well, no, no. Right. Yeah, that that just gives everybody a soapbox, basically. <laughs> and that you I, know, I hate- you really have to pay attention to what your ground is. When you look at great, and I mean great videos, well done by Gary B over in England when an XP did. He does fantastic videos. He does. He's got yes, a production crew. They look great, the whole thing. That's not here. Over there, you wander around, and I've hunted England for about 30 days total now. Full days, I mean, like 10-hour days. And your ground balance will read 90 virtually all day long and never move. That's how clean the ground is. I spent 10 days last March in, in Colchester, England. I dug one pull tab. One. That is right. so nice. That is a different world that they are hunting those machines in. And those machines, they crank them up high, and they ground balance them, and they just walk, guys, because the ground lets them do it. There's no mineralization. There's almost no rocks. It's a whole other type of hunting. When you stick that same machine with those same settings and zero discrimination and all these other things, and you stick that in a park with some guy who just got his machine and saw a video, what he gets is an an erratic machine that makes all sorts of popping and grabbing and carrying on. And he says, this thing's a piece of junk. I can't, this is no good. I, I can't hunt like this. I did better with my whatever it was, my whatever machine you've got to adjust and buying like Andy's book or you know somebody settings that knows and has hunted for a while with the machine not just the flavor of the week uh, is going to make all the difference in the world for you okay it's going to most of what you're reading on the internet where to say this machine sucks or that one's great or this one sucks you got to take it with a grain of salt. You really do, because you've got guys who who've got a whole. I've been detecting fifteen years. I put two weeks on this thing. I know how to detect. I'm telling you, this thing doesn't work. Well, no, you don't know, and that's that's all I can say on that on that matter. I I, I don't want to I don't want to pick on people. Every I got, I know guys that have had six machines in the last two years, okay? But and we go hunt, and I find more stuff than they do. And I've always said, you know what? When you see when you show up at the hunt with your new machine, and you're proud of it and the whole deal, and it's a group hunt, and there's this one guy that walks in there at the end, and he's got a machine that looks like it was made in 1972. It's got that's wires, the one you want to watch for and stuff. Here's the thing: that guy's been hunting that machine all those years and he will kick your butt with that old thing Mm -hmm. and it's because he knows his machine and it all goes back 
when you get your new AT Pro or whatever it is, learn it. Spend time with it. Give it a chance. The machine knows what it's doing. You are the problem, not the machine. Right. you got to learn what it's trying to tell you. Yep. Yep. That's right. Oh, I, I probably sh- spieled along enough on that one, but go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Answer me something else, or ask me something else. I was I I was done. I guess I I should just get off here. I appreciate it. Um, That's no problem. Good answer. I uh, you know I've just I've heard so much back and forth from you know people I trust and and just in my opinion I, I without using one to me it it just sounds like you know but I have to no, see how one works in the iron. Well, and, have no and that's have no good, fear. That's a good question because Todd has experience with both of them. Have no, mm-hmm. in my opinion, have have no fear of it. Not a problem, really not. Yeah, awesome. Well, hey, thanks for the time. I'll talk to you later, Josh. Thank you. Thanks for the call, Mike. Fred, right. how's it right. going? Uh, it's very good. Uh, Todd, how you doing? This is uh, Fred Settler. You know, oh, I, oh, camp, but I know who it is. Yeah, I know who it is. <laughs> yeah, the, the uh, guy that sabotages I, you know, his buddy's machine. Uh, put him, put oh, him yeah. right, put him right in beach mode. Andy, yeah, Andy, that's right. Andy that's called me over and says, listen to this thing. Do you know what that is? I said, that sounds like beach mode. Is that beach mode? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, I just uh-huh. wasn't doing that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, uh, I was really looking forward to you coming on the show tonight. I told some people from my uh, metal detecting club last night that we were talking about day use, and they were saying, I can't get my day use to go deep. I said, you got to listen tonight. you got to listen to Todd. Or go to his website. I gave him your website and everything. And you have your settings Good. on the website. What I think you should do is go over your settings a little bit on here because people are taking notes, I think, and kind of explain why you use those settings. All like, right. We, uh, we, we, we can do know, that. I think, I think that'll be really that. constructive use of your time because you're going to run out of time on here BSing about everything else. The, the Deus is a great machine. The CTX is a great machine. You just got to make people understand how to use the darn thing, you know? All right. All right. Well, why don't why don't we do that, Josh? I've got my settings all right. All right in front of me. We could run down through them, and those of you who are versed in the dais will know what I'm talking about. And the rest of you will have to wait and go to my site after you uh, buy a dais. Some of that? them may even have the remote in hand now. All right. Yeah. We can, yeah, we right. Can Let them uh, understand it a little bit more because. Uh, you know, I, I've been to the boot camp three times, and, uh, you know, does that make me still not? It just makes me want to learn it more, you know, and I feel I pick up something every time. Maybe not, you know, but. Uh, I, I'm sure you I'm sure you do pick up something each time, and, and the other thing is, you know what? It's a, it's actually a fun day of detecting. You're all, everybody in there is passionate about the hobby, and what's it cost? Yeah, 100, $125 for a full day of instruction with lunch? I mean. Yeah, I tried, I tried that much hard, for an hour. In it's work, a hard, you know, hard I, to and, beat. Right, how can you yep, go right. wrong there? And you how get do you to meet everybody. Great deal. And we had I thought, pizza. I thought that's money pizza. well spent, you know. So what I'm going to do is I, I want to thank you for all the advice you gave me at the, at the boot camp. I'm okay. going to get off. I'm going to let you go ahead with describing right. your settings because you only have so much time, you know. All but, right. Uh, I'll, I'll be Josh, listening. All right. Fred, it was great, Fred has great put us on you the... and, uh, I'm going to let you go right on onto it. All right. All right. All right. Thanks for the call, Fred. Well, uh, and, and so that's Fred kind had, of what I was waiting on, was getting Fred's call through and then figured, well, now we got to get down to where we can make okay. it through your settings after his call. But he kind of uh, put us right All on right. it anyway. <laughs> well, Fred's got us straightened out, so let's, let's, right. let's start here. All right. I'm going to go down through my Deus uh, Program V4. It's under Detecting Settings on cttodd.com if you want to go back to it or look. It does get updated, and I actually changed something this week uh, on it. So here we go. Let's start off with discrimination. Discrimination is at 6.5. The reason for that is I like what's called the horseshoe uh, display on an XP dais on the screen. If you go below 6.5 for discrimination, you start to lose the functionality and the target identification values from the horseshoe. So 6.5 is the minimum 
amount of discrimination that I will use. I know that Andy hunts at eight, and I know that Elaine, the guy that makes the machine, also hunts with discrimination turned on and smiles when you ask him about hunting with zero discrimination. Now, discrimination, again, 6.5. Expert button on discrimination takes you to tones. I hunt five tones. Now, listen to how I do this, uh, because this makes a difference, and this will help you. Although I have set this for five tones, there are actually only three tones in my settings. The first setting of tones is 120, which is the lowest number you can adjust it to on the dais. That first number automatically covers the dais for all targets up to 6.5. It's automatic in the program. You can't change that. You're just setting what that will be. So 120 occupies the space up to 6.5. Then from 6.5, my next tone break, my next tone break is 40. Okay. And again, the tone for that setting between 6.5 and 40 is 120 again, the lowest possible tone. So my reasoning for that, because those of you that have played with this, I have never in the USA found anything with the dais below a target identification of 40 that I cared about. Okay? That doesn't mean that there aren't positive targets below 40 because there are little pieces of this and little pieces of that. But they aren't anything that I'm looking for, and they're usually little pieces of junk, in my opinion. The next setting, the next break point is 69, and from 40 to 69, my tone setting is 590. So I'm going to hear those, okay? That's from 40 to 69. From 69 to 99, which is where most of your better targets are, I run the tone at 993, which is the highest setting on the dais. I want to hear those targets. Absolutely. And, and the last setting is one number only, and it is number 99, and that is also 120, the lowest number. And that quiets the machine down. Nothing hits at 99. At least I've never found anything that high. Big, huge silver will hit 97, 98, 96. But by putting 120 back in at 99, you quiet the machine down and takes away some of the chirps. Okay? Here we go. Next, sensitivity. And, and one thing I'll say, these settings are your initial settings when you turn the machine on in the field. Now, you may have to adjust them slightly, and I'll tell you how to do that after you get started. But these are very bright settings for my ground, and you may have to adjust slightly. Next up is sensitivity. The, my program sets it as 93 to start. The expert button, when you're on sensitivity, takes you to TX power, and that's on three. The difference between sensitivity and TX power is that sensitivity, no matter how you crank that, is not putting more power in the ground. That's not how it works. Sensitivity is deciding how much signal coming back from a target in the ground is required to make your detector sound off. That's what it does. It's not cranking up power. The expert setting of TX power three, which can be TX power can be set at one, two, or three. That setting is determining how much power is coming out of the coil into the ground. So by putting it at TX power three, I'm doing that on purpose. And I am trying to make the machine hot at that point. Now, if you get to a site, you turn on your machine. And incidentally, the way to turn on an XP dais is with the coil in the air away from everything until it stops blinking 
and you get audio in your headphones. Then you set it on the ground. If I start swinging and it's carrying on, it's chirpy, it's, it's, it's got issue. The first thing I will do is go to sensitivity and I will back to TX power back to two or even one. The next thing I will do, if that still didn't cure it, is I will back the sensitivity down to 90. Okay? That makes a huge difference and usually is all that's necessary. I very rarely have to do everything. It'll be one little bit of this or one little bit of that. But you do need to do that because if you're listening to chirps and the machine is carrying on, you're not listening to deep targets. Right. You're not hearing what you need to. That's correct. Your bottom number for sensitivity, unless you're doing something special like a seated hunt or something where nothing's deep, you shouldn't be below about 88 or 87 on sensitivity. Okay, next okay. is frequency. Frequency, I hunt in the U.S. again, and this does change for U.K. settings, but in the U.S., I hunt at 7.7. You don't miss any targets. I hit whacking little half reals and stuff at depth. I hit that half real the other day at seven inches down, and I know for a fact it wasn't straight on. Okay? So seven seven kilohertz. Round it off as eight. The next setting you, you come to in the, you know, in the tree there is iron volume. Iron volume, I run at two. What iron volume does in simple terms is You heard me say that I set the discrimination at 6.5. Iron volume depends, is adjusting the volume level. All this is is a volume control for every target that hits from 6.5 back to zero. Okay? It's a volume control. It's all it is. If you set the iron volume to zero and you still have your discrimination at 6.5, you, that would be conventional discrimination and you would hear nothing from any target that was 6.5 or below. The beauty of the XP days, this is one of those features, the iron volume. I want to hear the volume. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, hear the iron. That tells me there's habitation. Something happened here. Okay. Next. So we want to set our iron volume to two. Reactivity. This is how fast the machine is taking pictures of the ground. Let's say it that way. Okay. I generally, my program starts at one. I never go above three. And sometimes, depending on how much iron's in the ground, I may go to two. And now we have a 2.5 setting uh, also in version four. Reactivity. Is, a, is, again, one of the best features of an XP Deus. Reactivity adjusts how fast this machine will reset from one target to another as you sweep the machine. Even at a setting of one, we are hands above the speed of a CTX. So sweep speed doesn't have to be as slow. But putting it in two or three is a absolute advantage in a nail bed. Uh, we can talk about, so I, I have found some targets that, that, that I, just two weeks ago, if you went to Fine Mall and you looked on there, I, I spent two nights in the iron on purpose. I went back to home sites with the dais where I know I hunted the CTX and I knew there was a big concentration of nails. And I went back in there on purpose with the dais, and I cranked up the reactivity to three, and I went in there and pounded. And those finds are over there at Fine Mall. They're still on the first page because everybody's lazy and nobody posts anything, but they're over there. <laughs> you want to see? But I dragged, I, I dragged silver, some large scents and stuff out of nails, and I had the reactivity cranked up, and I could hear individual nails as I'm going. And what you're doing is you're sweeping it, and you're hearing grunt, grunt, grunt. You hear that high tone, and you come back just to make sure. Grunt, 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 grunt. In each nail, you're listening to it. Tick, 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 tick. Grunt, 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 grunt. Bing. You hear that high tone. If you get it in two directions, 90 degrees off it, you dig it, and now you've just picked something out of the iron. And that is the beauty of an XP Deus. 
lightning fast, plain right. and simple. Now, reactivity expert is silencer. Silencer, I run at zero. I never go above one, and neither does Andy. Expert, the two places on an XP dais that you will lose depth by misadjusting is reactivity and the silencer. If you crank them up, what you're doing, when you crank it up and you're in the iron bed, you are accepting that you're making it fast. And fast means that it takes a, it, it doesn't wait for those signals from way down there deep to come back. This is layman's terms, but right. what you're doing is you're speeding up that machine. So the stuff that's way down is not, uh, gonna have time to get back to the coil before it, before it takes another picture, let's call it, of the ground. So you're doing it on purpose, but you're doing it for a purpose when you move your reactivity. The silencer is there to, to, to help with the crackling and the, the carrying on that happens. But the thing I want to bring up, and this is super important, every time you touch the reactivity up or down, you must check the silencer because it will move on its own automatically. Yeah, they do go hand in hand. I do recall that from they, when uh, Mo was on the show. They are tied together and your silencer will jump up to three and you don't want it there believe me that will cost you depth in a big way next is audio response audio response is how much it's amplifying let's put uh, it's amplifying the level that the targets are coming back to the coil you're amplifying those signals now, a lot of guys say run your audio uh, response down low at one or two. That way you can tell uh, how deep the target is and so forth like this. Right. If it's further away, then it'll be a softer it's space- sound. Right. I I completely disagree. I, I run mine at four. I am more concerned with hearing every single target that's there than I am worried about trying to tell how deep it is based on how faint the signal is. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't want to listen to faint whispers. I want a half real to whack me in the side of the head, whether it's at two inches or eight inches. Right. I want to hear it and get it out of the ground. We will deal with how deep it is with our shovel. Okay. (laughs) There you go. Okay. The next is notch. I'm currently not using notch. Uh, in any of my programs, uh, I used to, but it was chopping audio on me. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to go into detail on it, but I have my reasons that I'm no longer notching. If you want to use notch, it is a great feature. You know, if you find that all over this one yard, there are, I don't know, a bottle cap that reads 54 every single time. You just notch from 52 to 56. And you won't listen to that bottle cop anymore, and it won't cost you depth or anything. On an XP dais, the brains live in the coil. And by notching, you are not adding more discrimination. All you're doing is telling the dais, the dais assigned, every target that goes under that coil is assigned a number from 1 to 99. Every single target has a number. That's how it works. The notch just tells the dais that if you get a 54, or what would we say, 52, Don't send a beep up to the headphones. That's all it does. It's not going to interfere with depth. It doesn't do anything else. It's just an electronic uh, signal telling it, yep, send us information for everything else, but if you see a 52, don't send a signal. Right. You can pick up on it, but don't tell us about it. Don't tell it. That's exactly right, Josh. That's exactly right. So cost you nothing. It's a freebie. But I, I find when targets are close to the edge of the notch that you have set, they get a little chopped, and I don't like my audio messed with. Okay, next up is uh, ground balance. I use manual. How I set it is a very simple way for anybody to set. I start my program in tracking ground balance, Okay. You get a couple swings in. This is where I was talking to you earlier, mentioning earlier that this is where you're adjusting the sensitivity if you had to 
or the TX power if you had to, that type of thing. Right. Uh, let the machine grab a number for the ground that you're on today. Then I switch using that number that the machine has grabbed. I switch it to manual and let it stay there. You have to keep an eye on it. If you're, if the real ground number and your machine's number in manual get separated by six or seven points, you're costing yourself targets. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You'll look down. It says 90 on the top number where you set your machine. You'll look down, and your machine is currently telling you it's 72 for the ground. Ooh. And, and, and you're missing stuff, okay? And this, how severe this is, depends on how much the minerals are. Uh, in your area, uh, that's what it comes down to. So ground balance is a, is tracking, and then manual. The reason I don't just, and it would seem that tracking would be the way to go because it'll keep track of it for you. You don't have to mess with it. You don't have to pay attention. That uh, you have to keep in mind. All adjustments have a have a plus and a minus. Tracking, once you swing over your target once or twice or three three times, especially some of you out there that swing eight times before you decide to dig, which I'm also <laughs> which I'm also against. Uh, but again, I do dig in the fields and in the woods where it doesn't matter if I make a hole. But you know, if you're in the park, you do have to swing and be more picky. Uh, at least you should. That's best for the hobby. Right. But if you're but if you're in tracking mode. What will happen is your target will disappear in the ground. And the reason for that is your machine starts to see your target as part of the ground. And what ground balance does is make the ground invisible to the machine so that you so that the machine sees the targets in the ground. Once your target is part of the ground and you keep swinging over it and swinging over it, your machine says, oh, that must be some piece of mineral or something in the ground. And boom, your your, your target disappears on you. So yeah, what you just kind of tuned it out. If it does disappear on you, all you do is you swing over a foot away for a couple swings, and you come back over your target, and it'll be back again. And then you got four or five swings before it disappears again. But that's the downside of tracking. Okay, next. Uh, in the ground balance section, there's something called ground notch. Ground notch eliminates a lot of little pops and grabs uh, that you're listening to, but on the ground balance side. Ground notch should be is a, is a range from 60 to 90, and you'll see it when you open it up. And as you use your plus or minus keys, you, you, you fill however much of the ground notch you want to use. I use 60 all the way to 90 on every single program, there is no downside to ground notch. You don't have to pay a bill for that one. It's not going to cost you depth. All it's going to do is relieve your ears from some popping and banging. Oh, ground, nice. notch, ground notch is an absolute freebie and well worth engaging in your program. Now, as I keep telling you these things to try and to do on your, on your program, keep in mind this with an XP Deus. You can turn your program on and make all the changes you want on a given day. If you don't save it, all you got to do is turn it off and turn it back on again with the coil in the air, as I said, until it stops blinking, and your program will not be changed at all. It is the perfect machine to mess with over, over top of uh, a target or whatever to see what adjustments you like better. Just don't save it unless you really are convinced you want it. Okay? So next one is ID norm. ID norm always on the previous Deus programs was off. You had to turn it on. ID norm takes all the targets and instead of what happens to a target, a large scent in 18 kilohertz, 12 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz, or 4 kilohertz, on an XP Deus or any other machine for that matter, we're talking frequencies, the TID, the target identification, will change based on what frequency you're in. What the ID norm does 
is make all targets, no matter what frequency you're in, read to the scale that is assigned to 18 kilohertz. Right. That sounds like it's a good idea because a silver dime will always be 92 or whatever it is. Because it, no matter what frequency I'm in, it's going to read 92. I know I got a dime. The downside of that is that it piles all of your good t- target IDs, kind of like a CTX does, right up at the top. And you can't tell what you have anymore. There's also uh, part of that is that if there's some tricks to identifying iron where uh, you switch frequency and if the, the identification of what you're swinging over, if the number goes down, it's a good target. If it stays the same or goes up, it's junk. Walk on. But that's a day's trick that is in Andy's book. You got to get, we're not going to do that now, but it's something valid to listen to. So ID norm, you want off. Okay. On all programs. Now you have, couple ways to look at things on an XP dais, especially now that V4 is out there. You have the original horseshoe on the screen, or you have the XY screen, which was a special option on the previous uh, program. I use the horseshoe because there's more information there, and I'll tell you why. This spring, when V4 came out, I was as hot to use it as anybody else was, and I even had an early version of it and so forth. Uh, but what I found is, and I gave this a good uh, two-month try. It was very, I was trying to find ways that it would work. I'm a testy guy. I'm, I'm a geek. Right. I freely admit it. Um, but I tried to use the XY because it made sense to me, the XY, how it worked, showing you targets in the ground and, and their signature. The XY screen on a coin-sized target, round target, will lock up nicely and tell you that's a coin. It will. Very nice. You look down, you look at that, you say, that's a coin. You dig down, and it's a coin. It is right. Here's the problem. I like buttons. I like relics. I like lots of things that aren't perfectly round. I like bent buttons. I like bent coins. I like all sorts of relics. And if you run that XY screen and you and you you hit a target, it'll show you the bar going across like it's supposed to with squigglies all over it, which is supposed to mean what? Junk. But that's and, not junk. And I like to find that stuff. And the XY screen, what I worry about, because what I was doing, I did my testing. I mean I found this out pretty quick that it that it was doing this on good targets what I consider a good relic target. What it would do is I I would find a target. I'd look at the TID screen or the XY screen and it would say good target or it would say crap target. And I would dig it anyway using my discrimination, which is my head, my shovel, and the size of the target and the, the location that I was on. That determines what I dig, not a machine. And I would sit, but I would make myself say it out loud. I would say, that's a good target. Even if the XY screen said no. And I would dig down, and what I would find is, guess what? There's an discuss- discussion plate or, or, uh, or, or a bigger target or a bent target or something, and it's a target I absolutely wanted. But the XY screen said it's not a coin. It was right. It wasn't a coin, but it's not a target I don't want. Right. That, that is a problem. So I went back to the horseshoe after my testing, and... There's just more information there with the horseshoe, and it's more dependable. And that is, that's the reasoning. I think it's absolutely, if you're going to coin shoot in a park, XY screen's the way to go. Plain and simple. You're out there, you're, you know, not necessarily maybe looking for extra deep targets, because then again, you're in relic zone. But if you're in that park and you're coin shooting, or you're at the ball field and you're coin shooting, XY screen, I wholly say, is the absolute way to go. That sucker will lock right up and uh, tell you, oh, there's another quarter. There's another dime. And it'll be right. And it'll be right there in the top of the grass or two inches down or whatever. And you'll have it. And that's coin shooting. And there's nothing. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my kind of hunting. That's that's all. I just I personally don't care about anything that was made after 1900. 
Right. <laughs> and, I, and I don't care if it's got a key date on it or not. <laughs> it just doesn't, right. Just so and I'm looking for the old stuff. That's, that's just me. That's just me. I have several friends who have instructions if I ever post a Merc Dime to find me and shoot me. Because <laughs> <laughs> huh? I've got, I've apparently got a fever or something. I've got nothing against it, and I certainly take every Merc Dime I find, but I just don't post them. <laughs> right. That's, that's all. That's all. Okay, so then I have some settings here that says things to remember. Tracking is a nice, lazy, ground bounce setting, but to get the most out of your machine, use manual ground bounce and pay attention to it. Using a plus or minus bias of two or three points on the ground bounce setting can help. So let's say the machine, the XP Deus, tells you that the ground reading is uh, 88. If you wanted your machine to run a little hotter, and you can get away with it without, ch- again, without chatter and without things that are going to interrupt with you hearing a deep target. You set your ground bounce at 86, two, two points below, and you'll get a little more performance out of your machine. Nice. But again, that has to be selectively applied. And I can't say it enough. If you, if you, if you can't hear what's in the ground because of one kind of chatter or another, you need to change something on your machine because you are missing targets. It is that simple. If you can't hear it, you can't dig it. Right. If you're not hearing it, you're not finding it. That's right. Uh, the next one just reminds, this is all on my site again, but it reminds you that if you touch reactivity, you absolutely, every single time you touch reactivity, you must touch the ex- expert button and check that the silencer is still at zero or at the most one. I wouldn't run it above one. Uh, I don't run it at minus one, which is the absolute off setting of the of that setting, uh, because it does quiet things down a little bit, and I found that it cost me nothing for just a little bit more peace in my life for zero on silencer. The last one that I'll do here is I I take my program, and this says on my on my site, I take my program, And then I build a program right next to it, which is not hard once you understand this, once you get this. And I build one called CT Todd Iron. The only difference in the program is that it's at 4 kilohertz. The reason I do this, and I put it in an adjacent slot on the XP days next to my normal program, is if I get a questionable iron target or something that I think may be iron, I quickly switch, and on a dais, this is nothing, guys, compared to a CTX or a lot of machines. It's just one touch of a button, and you're onto your other screen. Uh, yes, you could have your your second detect screen on CTX. I'm aware of that, but I'm talking about major change here from one setting to another. If you flip to the iron setting and then sweep your target, the rhyme goes like this. If the number goes down, get down and dig it. If the number goes up, walk on by. So if you have a questionable target, now you have to prove, don't take my word for it, you have to prove these things to yourself so that you so that you learn it. But try it, build the iron piece, say to yourself, Todd's program says that's junk. I'm going to dig it. But say to yourself so you know before you dig, this is going to be junk. And then you see if I'm not right or if you're not right on how that setting works. It'll help you. Um, in a wood setting, uh, unless I'm really baffled, I probably would have popped it out of the ground. Because at the end of the day, uh, and this is English digging, and this is woods digging or field digging. You're the digging more it all you, anyway. The more targets you dig, the more keepers there's going to be in your pouch at the end of the day. Uh, in England... You sweep over it, and if it beeps positive, you dig it. There's no ifs, there's no ands, there's no buts to that. And you dig it as quickly as you can, and you also don't bend down until it's out of the hole. You just keep digging until it's out of the hole, because you're in a big, huge farm field. You're going to fill your hole just like any normal, good person would do. But you keep digging, because it's faster to dig, 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 Get it out of the ground, kick it with your foot, find it, and put it in your pouch, and then kick it all back in the hole and move on 
than it is to get down on your knees and look around with the probe and you don't want to do it that way. Right. He who dig he who digs more in England goes home with more. <laughs> it's that simple. It's, it sounds goofy, but it's true. Well, it's, it's true. Well, he who he who digs more in England gets more sent back to him after it's been examined. But <laughs> yeah, I I still don't have my toys uh, my toys from this past March. But uh, yeah. Uh, the last thing I'll say, I don't know how long you, you run here, uh, but uh, it's 930 now. So. Well, I figure we're at least going to go long enough that we can get all of your settings out there. Well, th- that ran down all the settings that are on my page. It, you know, the setting them, take your time. Just click on that and go. And then I do have uh, my CTX basic settings are, are on there also down at the bottom of that page. But my settings also are in Andy's uh, CTX book. So if anybody has that book, which is also a terrific book. Well, it might be a little cheaper now. I don't know. But it it is. It's a very good book. You can't can't beat it. I mean, he he breaks down every single thing there. Mind Lab Factory ordered books to give to their people from Andy. I mean... (laughs) He, he he does he the man understands yeah that's under- saying something right there i mean uh, it's just you know metal detecting is has has been my passion for about 20 years uh i am an electronics guy by trade i'm a high end audio video uh dealer you know doing music systems and theaters and stuff like that so these machines are right in my uh, right in my dooryard. You know, it's just so I I understand electronics. I understand uh, uh, what's going on inside the box a little bit more than the average guy does, and uh, I'm just nerdy enough to uh, really chase targets. And the other thing is, you know what, guys? Yes, there's a lot of nice pictures on my site. I live in Connecticut. We got a big honking jump on the rest of this country for dropping shit in the woods. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, True. you think it's you think it is an accident that Dave Wise and Hiltzy and uh, and my site and us guys that hunt up this way have like fifty shoe buckles a piece. You know, by the time people move to where a lot of the people live in the country, they didn't even use shoe buckles anymore. You know, <laughs> we just are in the right place. Oh, absolutely. And, and, Dave pulled that, two Connecticut coppers back to back today or yesterday, I believe. <laughs> and still had time to harass me online. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it, part of it is that we're on the East Coast. But the other part of it is, you know, I hunt with a partner. Uh, my partner is Gary Kilmer uh gk man on the forums terrific guy very good with a uh also part of the boot camps with andy uh terrific guy with a ctx he did trust me does not miss much uh and between him and i doing the research together uh just this week i got a new client and first thing i did once i got a look around i said oh look at all these acres was send me <laughs> But send the address to Gary, and Gary gets back to me. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, two old houses, and he also, I looked him up. He's got another house two miles away on another road. He says, yeah, we want them. We want them. So, you know. Well, you can't that, beat that. Uh, that's, you know, that's how it works. Uh, Gary is, uh, he's buried down in the bottom of a library in the big town near us, and that's what his job is. He's an IT guy. And uh, I send over the info. He gets back to me. Yeah, ask. And then he calls me the landowner whisperer. And I go and talk to uh, the landowner and tell him what we do. And I hand him a business card with the detecting information on it. So you're not just some guy. And I send them to uh, my website to see what I look for. And they go, wow, that's cool. Yeah, come and do that. And because they are generally interested in what's on their property, too. Right, you've and, got them curious now, and that's that's how that's how my detecting works. I've been a very lucky guy over the years. Uh, there's no denying it. Uh, and 
that compiled with being on in the Northeast is a terrific uh, setup to finding great stuff, you know, uh, in a hobby that that is fantastic. Now, the last thing I'll say uh, about this hobby is, guys, everybody in the world out there is doing photo overlays of 1850 maps for the areas and your homes. And all those little black squares that are on that map are where houses were and so forth and so on. You need to get out there. Right. Watch Dave, watch, just watch Dave Wise's posts as he talks about got a couple more keepers out of a pounded cellar hole. Got a, got a, a, a couple more keepers out of another one, but it had been pounded. There are just so many cellar holes out there, guys, and you want to get out there and get on it because what we've got here is not a renewable resource. Exactly. You're running out of time. If you don't get it, or if you don't get to it, someone else will have already beat you there. With today's machines and the availability of those machines uh, for reasonable money, you take an AT Pro for what are they, 550 now? That's uh, a somewhere whole, around there, I think. That's a whole lot of machine. That is a whole lot of machine. And you take that machine, you're going to find. 98% of what a CTX is going to find with an AT Pro, realistically. I mean, where are all the coins you dig? Right. Yes, I yes I hit an occasional coin from 8 to 12. The AT Pro will do, will do 10. Right. So, for, so is a CTX worth another $1,200? Exactly. Little- then... Then you have to, I guess there again, that falls into a little personal preference too, where you have to ask yourself, am I willing to pay that much more just for that occasional coin? AT Pro going to water, CTX going to water, right? Right. And so what the, the point of what I'm saying is you can buy a damn good machine, hands above what was available 15 years ago, for $550. In that range, from a couple of makers. Let's not just oh yeah talk about. I mean, the AT Pro talk. is one of the most popular, but you can find machines AT in that Pro's, price range from any manufacturer, pretty much. AT Pro, AT Pro's got its own TV show. Sure, why wouldn't they right. sell a billion of them? Would guys that climb trees crack me up? But anyway. <laughs> Well, I saw that uh, Barb had a question in the chat, but she never posted it, so I don't know if she fell asleep or what. No, she just posted something. CTX killed me in an old schoolyard with the AT Pro. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then. All right. Well, I guess uh, if anyone... Larry says E-Tracks will kill an AT... He's right, too. He's right yeah. too. In my in my opinion, I believe me, I'm I'll probably get at least two hate mails out of this tonight. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys will friend me on it on Facebook, and you'll use my site as it's intended, uh, as a and, resource. And they'll check back regularly in case you switch your settings up. Yeah, yeah, which I very well may because actually yesterday my elliptical HF coil showed up. So there's going to be a learning curve with that coming, and I will essentially blog on my site about what I think about it, the elliptical high high frequency coil, and uh, we'll go from there. Nice. I've heard some good things so far. It, it seems like it should be a good coil. I'll be interested in reading those blogs myself. I will do it. I will do it. Well, I, uh having me on um and uh if nobody else has got any questions but if you know what if you do have questions too just email me that's oh, fine yeah, e- yeah emails right f- friend him on facebook and send him a message that's all that's all if we're talking detecting i'm having a good time you're not bugging me if i'm working i won't answer till i'm done working that's all <laughs> there you go mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to be on with us tonight. It has been a while, and once again, you do come well-informed and very knowledgeable and a great guest to speak with uh, all around in general. 
Uh, definitely a good show. And, uh, you know, look forward to uh, maybe doing it again sometime in the future. Not a problem. Uh, I enjoy doing it. Again, we just spent an hour talking about metal detecting. It's my favorite thing. Right. Uh, if anyone else had a uh, question for you, hopefully they slipped it in here somewhere. Otherwise, they can always uh, friend you on Facebook or, or, like you said, drop you an email. I'm sure your website also has your email and other contact information. Sure. Sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, yep. Anything else you would like to mention? No, I think that's about does it. Join a local club, guys. Let's all stick together. Try to buy at least every other time from a from a local dealer instead of online. They are important uh, to to our hobby. Try to think of it as a hobby more than a than a business. And uh, you know, fifteen dollars uh, more at a local dealer is uh, well worth the money for the relationship and the how to that you won't get online. That's a good point. The customer service that continues after the sale, because you're not going to get that dealing with the online one. That's right. That's absolutely right, guys. They, the, having that little dealer in these towns is well worth having. Right. Very true. All right. Well, I think if uh, that covers everything, I'm probably going to uh, let you go and roll this on out of here so I can get through the bumper and everything like that. And okay, uh, we will definitely be in contact. All right. No problem. Thanks again, Have a good Todd. Night, everybody. You have All a right. wonderful night. All right. Well... There you go, Todd Yerkes, Connecticut Todd. Man, I'm telling you what, what a a wealth of information. I mean, definitely uh, great speaking with him again. Obviously, we had had him on in the past uh, doing a show on permissions, which was also very, very informative. If any of you had missed that show in the past, it is an archive. You can go back, you can find it, you can listen to it again. A lot of good information in there uh, pertaining to the topic of permissions. Much like tonight, we were kind of going uh, with the topic of detectors. The dais, the CTX, some of the settings. Uh, we had some great calls come through. Um, a lot of good information and questions. And definitely worth listening to again if you did not take notes. Hopefully you were taking notes, especially when Todd was discussing his dais settings. Or at least you jotted down on a napkin next to your computer or something what Todd's website is. So you can just go there and check the settings otherwise it's it's not that hard just google connecticut todd detector settings and it'll show up pretty much right at the top of your search results definitely so other than that we uh we did run on a little bit with taking the calls on and then trying to make sure we got through todd's settings as well because i definitely wanted to make sure we gave him time for that uh, he was definitely prepared. He had everything right there to just run right down the list. That's why we all kind of got quiet and left him to uh, hold the floor on his own, basically. You know, let him do his thing and, and get that information out. Let him do his thing and get that information out there. Because when we have a guest on the show, that's their time. That's their floor time, you know, much like when we're doing open lines and, and you guys are calling in, that's your floor time. You know, we can call in and talk about whatever, but when we've got a guest on, we want to hear what he's got to say, right? So, we're probably going to get on out of here. If you all enjoyed the show, by all means, throw us a like. You can follow us here on Spreaker. You can follow us on iTunes. You can follow us over on Facebook, the Beyond Sight and Sound page, the Beyond Sight and Sound group. Uh, the Relic News Group, the All Metal Mode Group, Ohio Relic Hunter, First Capital Diggers, the list just goes on and on and on. And uh, today's Wednesday, so we've got Hardcore Metal Detecting tomorrow, and then they'll be back Saturday. 
will be back Sunday, and then All Metal Mode and Relic Roundup will be on Monday and Tuesday with History Seekers, and there we go again, we start the clock back over. So, we hope you all enjoyed the show. Definitely, there was a lot of information. We're going to roll on out of here. Everyone else, have a wonderful night. Check out Todd's site. Send him a friend request on Facebook. And if you can get out there and make those finds, get out there and make those finds and post up the pictures. You know we love to see them. And if you uh, you found some good information in the show tonight, send me a message. Let me know. Let me know how that worked out for your finds. Maybe it improved them. Uh, maybe you found a setting that works a little better for you in your particular area. That's fine, too. I still want to know. So, we're going to go. We'll see everyone on the next one. Have a wonderful evening, folks. <laughs>